That is the latest uh, from Kisumu. But I want us to continue have, having this discussion here in studio in regards to the primaries that are beginning tomorrow, uh, starting, of course, with ODM. Joining me in studio <coughs> right now is uh, Felix Odiambo, who is the Electoral Law and Governance Institute CEO. Thank you very much for joining us again on this center. Yes. And then we also have Ambassador Jack Tumor, who is a former ACK commissioner. Thank you very thank much you, for thank coming you. through. Thanks, thank you. All right, so let's begin our conversation, really, and uh, focus on what uh, the regional coordinator there is talking just basically about the environment that the primaries are going to be held under. I'll start with you, Ambassador. What kind of environment do you think we are in right now? Is it good for the primaries, taking into consideration what has been happening in the last couple of weeks? Thank you for the invitation. But before I answer that, let me go back to the comment that we got just a little while ago, mm -hmm. that is it, uh, IBC brought delayed or brought forward the nomination time. Mm. That was not IBC. I think the rules, the regulations, the law requires that those nominations have to be done within that framework. Right. And IABC was working within that framework to give that. I think it is the party which failed to, uh, to take in what was in the law as passed by the Interparty Electoral Commission mm -hmm. and brought sort of wanted to start election nomination before. So it is correct that what should have been done is for them to get the law and follow the law as it is. Right. Now, coming back to what Mr. Njenga said, I think I totally agree with him that mm -hmm. things have gone a little hayway. We are not happy that force has to be used to Kenyans uh, at this stage mm -hmm. to make them to respect what the law really requires them to do. We, it is very sad that to date, the nomination, and it is the inter-party nomination, yes, it is yes. not something outside, mm. has caused a lot of anxiety. What happened in Migori? What happened in Madare? What happened in Busia? There are things that start to cause a lot of worry mm. for us. I hope that people will take it seriously and we understand that this is just but an election. However, <coughs> I don't know whether we are addressing the symptoms or whether we are going to the real cause of why we are having this. Mm -hmm. If it is happening at the nomination level, the fear is what happens when we go to the real elections. I think what we have to do is to rein in the sponsors of these problems because we have two extremes. We have got the candidates, I think, who are drunk with money because to them money is not a problem. Mm -hmm. They would like to throw it up and down as they like. Because after that, they know when they get to places of positions, <laughs> they are they going to the gold mine. Yes. So they don't mind spending we'll as much money back. To, money to, make, back to get their money back. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, we've got this loss of young people who are unemployed, who are poor, and they would like to go in to get anything mm -hmm. to <coughs> feed themselves. So perhaps the long-term solution is to bridge this gap mm -hmm so that we don't subject these poor fellows, young men, unemployed, poor, to this type of harassment. But I totally agree with what okay. Njenga said, that we need to be very, very cautious, otherwise we are planting a seed that will be terrible for this country. All right, Felix, I'd like to hear your thoughts. He says that uh, there's a feeling that this is a high stakes uh, pr pr nomination process. Why is it like this? It is high stake, mm -hmm. and not just the nomination. Mm -hmm. I've maintained that uh, we are faced with the, probably the most mm -hmm. high-stake elections in the history of multi-party uh, democracy in this okay. country. Mm -hmm. uh, and the stakes are not only high at the national election uh, with respect to the presidential elections. Mm -hmm. The stakes are equally high at uh, the devolved government. I think the promises of devolution mm -hmm. uh, actually or will be realized in the second election uh, after the promulgation of the Constitution in 2010, and which is this election that we are talking about. And if anybody had any doubt uh, that the political and electoral environment is going to be peaceful in the run-up to 2017 elections, uh, then I think the events that happened uh, over the last uh, few months, uh, uh, some of which Ambassador Tomo has alluded to, uh, the chaos in Migori, uh, mm -hmm. for example, the chaos that we've witnessed in other parts of the country, Embu, uh, for example, and Jubilee strongholds. Mm -hmm. But the stakes will equally be higher uh, in the so-called NASA and Jubilee strongholds. Yes. Why? Because you win uh, the nominations, you clinch mm -hmm. the court, I mean, NASA 
or Jubilee ticket in those areas, then you are as You're good sure. as elected. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to see a lot of uh, violence. We have already seen violence. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Karachunya constituency, where I come from, mm -hmm. I was told that two people have already been killed as we speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is that there's going to the governors. There's a lot of money in these elections. And uh, unfortunately, the Election Campaign Finance Law Act has been suspended. Yes. It will only begin to take effect from the next election. Yeah, yeah 2022. 2022. I'd like to talk about something that Ambassador has said, and it's raining in on the sponsors, the people who are behind this chaos. Mm -hmm. ODM is supposed, was supposed to release that report yesterday about the disciplinary issues that affected some of their members, but that did not happen. We're expecting it's going to be happening today. But how important is that process in this particular um, season of the elections? I think it's important. And uh, you see, I think the parties are trying to structure themselves a little too late in the day. Mm -hmm. Because these things have been, parties should be formed and should be seen to run throughout the five years. But as the parties, the way we know them, they come up, they wake up a few days before the elections, and they struggle to bring up these rules and regulations, mm -hmm. which are not assimilated sufficiently for the people to start appreciating them. But like I said, in the midst of poverty, in the meetings of some people being so rich with the resources, it really becomes very difficult to, to relate that to. But it is important. And this, I, I want to go say something about the register of political parties. Yeah. I think she's not done as much as we expected her do, mm -hmm. to do. The purpose of setting up that uh, commission, that uh, department, commission, was for her to monitor the formation of political parties, the discipline of the political parties, the running of offices of political parties. It would have been, I think we should, should have been getting there. Somehow, she was given that position. She has been in acting position for all this long. The, she has not been given sufficient resources mm -hmm. to run that office. Mm -hmm. So all these factors have uh, contributed into having political parties run their own show okay. the way they see it best. And Felix, uh, tomorrow ODM is starting their primaries. Do you think with everything that has been happening, they are ready to conduct a fair uh, and credible nomination exercise? Unfortunately, no party in this country uh, is, uh, has the machineries, uh, the financial resources mm -hmm. and the capacity to do uh, credible nominations. Uh, for the simple reason that elections is an extremely expensive affair. Yes, yes. If you look at the budget of IEBC, it is in the neighborhood of 45 billion shillings. Now, for especially the large political parties, uh, and given the fact that we do our primaries, party primaries, mm -hmm. taking into consider consideration universal suffrage, in other words, every voter who is a registered voter in that constituency or county will actually participate in nominations. Mm -hmm. It makes it so expensive it makes it so challenging logistically and to an extent that even if they have the best of intentions, mm -hmm. they cannot because the financial uh, resources that they need to, co uh, to put in place to deliver a credible nomination process is actually not there. So are we doomed? Is that what you're saying? No, no we're not. <laughs> I mean, if, with the circumstances, uh, political parties must try. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, an example that I, I normally give and uh, that is, uh, if you look at some of the factors that affect credible nominations, mm -hmm. is the so-called uh, overbearing influence of the party owners or the right. party sponsors mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. The perfect example we have is President Kibaki. Mm -hmm. Kibaki, uh, during the nominations when he was in DP and again in 2002 during NAC, most of his close friends actually lost elections, mm -hmm. but he never interfered with that process. Mm -hmm. And so even with the resources that political parties have, they can actually still be able to do nominations mm -hmm. that are peaceful. Okay. But, uh, I mean, uh, it, the, the coming weeks is going to be very, very interesting. All right. Yeah. I want us to uh, hear a bite uh, from Judy Pareno uh, from the ODM Elections Board. Let's just listen to her yesterday. She was speaking uh, during a roundtable by Asha Mui. Let's just listen to that. Well, around October last year, we started receiving applications from 1st of November of last year. And we closed uh, for some of the applications by 10th of January. And around um, end of March is when we completely closed. So we have in place about 5,000 applicants who have passed through 
the vetting exercise, which we did in December and January uh, this year. And then after that, we have been able to set county election committees in each of the counties right. where we have uh, a lot of uh, activity. Uh, as we speak now, in each county, I have a county election committee. In each constituency, about 170 constituencies, we have constituency election panels and all of them have since been trained and they are on ground. That, but that's so, impressive. I want to ask you this. I don't know if you saw this update, that today there are some aspirants who are not even confident in the ODM's process. They claim that some clerks have, you know, have been paid to favor some aspirants and they want to boycott the process. Yeah, there, there are issues that normally arise with this kind of an activity. I'm talking about almost 5,000 applicants. It is a big party, it is a big exercise. So definitely, along with such a big exercise, you expect a friction here and there, where you have so many children. So we are addressing those issues right. uh, as they come by, and I'm sure that we're ready. Like now, we are starting Bungoma, Busi, and Machakos. Let's start with the party members. Do you... All right, let's continue with our conversation. And Ambassador, you've heard there, she says they just have a bit of friction, uh, such a soft way to go about it. And, you know, um, there are quite a number of issues that have really come up even as we await to begin the primaries tomorrow. How democratic will this process be in regards to the issues that you've heard before? I hope it will be. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it will be because it all depends on how you have organized it. Because the, as it were, Running of primaries is expensive, like my Mamina uh, said. Yes. And they, I'm not sure that they have got <coughs> sufficient resources to run those primaries effectively. So in Kenya that we know, there's going to be a lot of bribing. There's going to be those saying who is a lot closer to the uh, boss to the than the other. Mm. So that such influence, I like it to come up. And uh, as it were, it, I am not very sure that we can get free election at that level. All right. Already, uh, Felix, there are aspirants who, who are crying foul, saying that there are people who have been given direct certificates. A good example is the situation between Elizabeth Ongoro and TJ Kajuang. Mm. Um, and Judy Pareno will listen to the clip a bit later on. She was very categorical that, you know, no, that did not happen. I mean, there's a bit of wishy-washy <laughs> attitude when it comes to some of these uh, big names and, you know, the kind of uh, allegations that are coming through. But with that, and the aspirants, you know, saying that there are people who are still unchallenged, the nomination process has not begun, but they still, they already have uh, certificates. How is that going to play in this whole process? Well, let me say this. Parties nominate on the basis of the nomination rules and procedures, right. their own nomination rules and procedures, mm. and the, their own party constitution. Uh, that is how the law is structured to an extent that it then gives political parties a leeway mm -hmm. and uh, uh, powers to be able to determine their nomination outside of the IEBC or outside of the uh, normal processes. It is not unique to Kenya. It happens within, you know, even established democracies like the Labour Party, uh, the Conservatives, right. etc. The problem, though, is that how transparent and accountable is that process of giving nominations? Mm -hmm. Now, like for example, the case with the uh, ODM, if it is established that uh, after an advert was, a flower, uh, was a given, that in a certain constituencies or counties, only sole candidates emerge, in other words, they didn't have anybody uh, or to people challenge them, to challenge them mm. then it is perfectly within the party's powers and is consistent with their own nomination rules and procedures to actually give direct tickets. But the way to do it and to make it accountable, that decision should be subjected to the party organs, mm -hmm. not the party leadership, okay. not the party owner, such that then if uh, the party having then made that determination that a number of candidates, and I read this morning in the standard that uh, actually in uh, Meru County, the Honorable Kiraitu Mutu, uh, Murungi and the uh, Mythical Inturi have mm -hmm. actually been given, had no people, had no opposition, yes, and that therefore they'll be given direct nominations. That is perfectly all right. Okay. And so, but I think the situation in, um, in, uh, in uh, uh, what do we call it, uh, Ruaraka constituency, right. I, I'm not sure, I think the party, uh, on, uh, the Honorable Longoro came out and uh, said that uh, Tom, I mean, Kajio, oh, the Honorable Kajiwang had actually been given direct nominations. Mm -hmm. But I want to believe that since that particular seat attracted more than one candidate, uh, the Honorable Longoro may have jumped the guns. 
uh, prior because there was no evidence that uh, a direct nomination had actually been given. But if she had valid reasons uh, to preempt that, mm -hmm. and if she suspected uh, and rightfully so that Honorable Kajuang was to be given a direct nomination, mm -hmm. then that was wrong. Yeah. But in, ca in constituencies and counties which had only one candidate, mm -hmm. it is perfectly all right for the parties to give direct nomination. Mean, right. But also, I just want to add on that, you see, uh, we're talking about the expenses. Yes, yes. Some of these people who are getting direct nomination are the actual sponsors of those political mm -hmm. parties. So the leadership rely on them to get money so that they can run the parties. But as I, my brother says, it is unfortunate that where you have got two candidates, you choose one and leave the other. Mm. It is going to cause problems. All right.